In this episode, I talk about how to master the art of the cold email. Welcome to episode 194 of the Honest Entrepreneur Show, where I help creatives like you to master your marketing. My name is Tom Ross, and let's get into it. Guys, I am starting to become flabbergasted by how little I actually care about the metrics. I haven't checked the data, the downloads on the show in quite a while. Instagram, everyone's jumping on the carousel bandwagon at the minute, and I know when I do them, they massively over-index. I just don't care that much, honestly. I have recently halved my reach and my impressions and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I saw it drop, like it plummeted because I started mixing up my content. I started doing stuff that wasn't just engagement bait and like bait and share bait and another freaking carousel to overwhelm people with information. I started mixing it up and making content that made people smile or laugh or inspired them or was more actionable. And I stand by that decision. I honestly could not give a shit if my reach has gone backwards, if my growth slowed down. And then what happened after that? A couple of people started sharing me and my growth accelerated again. Ironic? Serendipity? I think so, you know? Like, I really think when you mix it up and you march to your own beat and you do what other people aren't, it might hurt you in the short term, um, but it's a pretty hollow life. If, if you're chasing those likes above everything else, above originality and variety, that's a sucky way to make content. So I'm gonna keep doing me. I advise you do you. This question is from Lou Jane. I know there's a lot of information out there on this subject, but I'm curious about your specific response. How do I pitch cold emails in a convincing way without sounding like a sleazy salesperson or desperate or spammy? It's a good question. Um, first of all, I really don't like cold emails. I'm doing some outreach at the minute with my business. And I kind of got my list of people I wanted to ideally connect with. And I had a little stalky stalky. And I tried to see if there were any mutual contacts showing up on social media. Um, I asked my contacts in that space if they knew any people. And I got a few warm introductions. And my God, does that make life easier. Getting an introduction from a mutual friend who's like, I love both you guys, you should talk. Like, it's a done deal before you've even started. You jump on, you trust that they're lovely, they trust you're lovely and you just do business and it's a billion times easier. So I'm all about working smarter when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I think it's worth investing the extra time and research and effort to try and get a warm introduction if at all possible. And that comes from having a bigger network yourself. So as they say, network is net worth. I hate that expression, but it's true. Um, so I would always be working on your friendships, on your network. It's gonna benefit you, even if it's not directly with that person, you never know who they're gonna know. But if that's not an option with these particular people, then my second option is I try and warm them up. I actually comment and engage on their stuff. I connect with them on social media. I try and get on their radar. And I did a recent post about this where Rachel and my community landed, Lauren Holm and Ian Barnard, some other big clients. She did that by originally emailing them, not hearing back, and then following up, clarifying who she was and she'd been an active part of their community for two years and they came back straight away and they hired her because she wasn't another random person spamming them. So don't be under any illusions, guys. When you go and warm, it's everything. When they have context on you, it's everything because we are inherently distrustful of strangers because there is a lot of spam and sleaze and selfishness on the internet. So I would always go down that route. That being said, if you have to go in cold, here's a few things you can do. First of all, go personalized and go specific. I hate those emails that just feel like a generic template. You can tell they've just sent the same thing to 5,000 other people. Equally, and possibly worse, is when it's clearly a template and they have just dropped in something specific and personal to you, but you can tell it's dropped into a template because that's like they're trying to trick you into seeming authentically interested in what you're doing. Um, and it feels like it insults my intelligence. So when it's like, hey, dear website owner, I recently enjoyed the blog post you did on Procreate brushes. Therefore, we should work. Like, you know what I mean? That kind of shit, like it sucks. So 
again, it's just about investing the time and care to actually go in a bit more personal. And so when I do this stuff, um, I'm generally upfront with what I want, but I will put the personalized stuff load down. And this is something I partly stole from someone, I can't remember his name on Instagram, um, where it was flipping the traditional thing. Because when you get an email and it's like, hey, love what you're doing, man. How's the wife and kids? Like, hope life's treating you good. By the way, um, here's my pitch. That, like you open it up and you're like, they're just being nice because they're trying to pitch me. When you flip it, something interesting happens is you get straight to business, you don't waste their time, but then you can add something that shows that you pay attention and you care. And for me, that's a much better approach. And I've been using that quite a bit recently. So this could look something like, hey, so-and-so, um, we are working with a ton of people and getting amazing results with X, and we would love to work with you. Um, if you're available in the next week at all, I'd love to jump on a call. Or if you have any questions, I'm happy to um, share some details. By the way, or PS, uh, love what you did with X, seriously inspiring. I followed you for a while and I'm a huge fan. So I hope to hear back and I'm excited to chat about the opportunity above. Something like that. And you see the difference, like it's not templatey, it's genuine, but it's straight down to business because you need to realize in a world filled with crappy cold emails and people you're trying to reach, those people are probably busy. They're probably busy as hell. They've got jam packed inboxes or gatekeepers on those inboxes. They don't have time to read your waffle. They don't want paragraphs. They want short, sweet, down to business, personalized and specific with a little pinch of that at the end. Um, and that's how I would do it. So good luck. And I hope this kind of mini cold email masterclass helped. Question of the day, have you ever sent a cold email or made a cold phone call? I have quite a bit and it's still pretty uncomfortable even now, which is why I always prefer going in warm. Well, hey there. You seem like the kind of savvy human being that enjoys high quality YouTube content just like this one. And if you'd like to see more of it, I hope you will hit the subscribe button below this video. If you'd enjoy more content like this, you can check it out right here. Make the right decision.